Why hello there! So, as you can see, I'm currently at the back of my E55 AMG with a PC and a custom board. So as I stated in my last video about my like head unit project I want to do for W211, this is kind of a prototype phase for it. I think I will do weekly videos on this, depending on how much progress I get done. But um, I just kind of wanted to demo the system working and how this would work. So, you've got your PC here with a Pico PSU. That runs into my power lines here, um, which will eventually go to, here you go, this is the power cable for the stock audio gateway module. And then here you've got a USB cable, which runs to this USB sound card. Don't worry, I'll explain like why it looks so sketchy right now. And then that wires all the outputs of all the six speakers to this board that I have built, which has got two TDA um, amplifiers. It's got a fan on here, ignore the two broken fins, I know that's not even. Um, but that cools the amplifier chips because they get really hot. Um, and surprisingly, these kind of keep it just about 40 degrees with the fan running, so that's good. It means they don't overheat. The amplifier chips on here actually are cooler than the one amplifier chip on here because this gets hot to the touch, like really hot when it's normally running and you've got music playing. But then also over here, you will see I've got a pin header which I've built, which if I take the stock speaker, speaker harness, which normally plugs into there, and with enough... don't know if you guys can see this because like the camera is really dark, but if I just quickly pop this on, it takes a little bit of... there we go. That clips onto there. So this is a prototype board I built, you can obviously tell because like some of the capacitors aren't soldered on, I've got wires going across, I've tested a few things, and this is so far the best combination. So, what do I do with this? Well, currently I've got a custom Linux kernel running on this with a lot of configuration changes, it's running Arch Linux. Yes, that is my daily driver on my laptop, so I figured I'd use it on here too. And this basically acts as a Bluetooth receiver for now. That's all it currently does. And then that hooks up to here, which hooks up to here. So if I power the system on, which I'm going to have to do off camera, one sec. There you go. Now that it's powering up, I can actually bring my phone out. One second. Oh. Okay. So here on my Bluetooth settings, you will see I've got W211E55HU. That is this guy here. And if I connect to it, in use for calls and media playback. So that's really nice. So now if I go ahead and open up my Spotify, let's just... Okay, I'm back. I've got some Lizzo playing, so let me just play that. And you can see on Spotify it's detecting 211E55HU. And if I turn the volume up on here... You can hear, um, basically the music playing through the car speakers. Now, Okay, I'll leave it at about this volume, this is good enough. So, music's playing from all the speakers in the car at once and they're all being individually driven. Pulse Audio, the audio demon on the computer, knows which speakers in the car are the bass ones, which is the two at the back. So, the sound on that is all driven correctly. And in fact, I'll see if I can put a video up of it doing the individual speaker test, because we found out that on the stock audio gateway module, it only has control over, well, when you play music through the command system on the stock car, you only have control over left and right, left and right channels of the music, and then this will basically do kind of a fake fade to give you front and back fading and balance and stuff. That's how it controls all four channels. This one, because the computer on here directly knows each one of the six individual channels on here, it can control each speaker independently, which is awesome. So I've got a video of, um, the audio test of it testing each one of the speakers. I'll put that up on screen now. Rear, right. Rear, left. Rear, center. Front, left. Front, right. Rear, right. Rear, left. Rear, center. Front, left. Now, as for what's left, and probably the biggest part of this project now, is now that I verified the amplifier circuitry works, is to actually build the main daughter board. So essentially, this over here will be sat where the Navi system is in here. And then as you see, there's another space on top of it here. This will be where this board will go, except this board will be the same size as a full micro uh, mini ITX motherboard, 
with the standoff hole so that I can drill posts through this one to the next board. And this will have all the I.O. so it will have an amplifier on it, it will have the power distribution for the amplifier and the PC so that it can be permanently plugged in. And little microcontroller, I'm going for a uh, Atmel uh, controller this time. That controller will basically uh, listen out on CAN bus, it will go to sleep when the rest of the car goes to sleep and then it will wake up when the car wakes up, powers on the PC but then puts it into a sleep state until you sit in the car and press the power button on the head unit and then it automatically wakes the PC up which will then display stuff on my screen that I'm going to put in the front of the car but that will be in another video. Um, I'll actually put a photo on screen now of what the board looks like in its current state. Um, I think this is very close to getting ordered and then I can test it all out and see how it is. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to quickly do a very quick progress update showing this working. Oh, and the board will also have, um, I'm going to 3D print some female connectors for these two, so that these two basically plug directly into the motherboard, into the daughter board, rather than having to be jankly hooked up like this. But yeah, that's about everything, so uh, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.